Hey guys, Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto Tools and Time.com. Welcome back. Left my regular camcorder at home, so I'll be using my smartphone. We'll see how it turns out. However, I want to throw this one up. I just got towed in. It's a, a 94. It's an older Buick with a 3.8. And um, I'll show you what the symptoms are. It's a co-worker of mine. I guess he had trouble getting it to work, and then when he went out to start it, it just starts up, revs up, and shuts off. Leaning towards the mass airflow sensor, some kind of metering problem. It's, um, I'm going to be plugging my scanner into it, see if we have any code. So let's take a look at it, see what it's doing, and do it to it. All right, here we go. Okay, hey guys, hopefully the glare isn't too bad on this. I've got my MT2500 hooked up. This is an OBD1 scanner. So newer style scanners over 96 won't do you much good. But I'm not expecting to have a scanner like this. I just, as a quick reference, I want to see if I have any codes. There are other methods to use to retrieving codes. I can demonstrate that later. However, for now, let's go into uh, to engine. Code data and road test. Uh, no codes present. See, I was hoping to find a code in here because I was kind of leaning towards that mass air, not meter in the air correctly. I just see that TPS is responding. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's see. A couple things here. Mass air flow. Let me see if that's responding. Yep. There you go. That looks better. Okay, guys. Well, that didn't tell us too much. But what it did tell us is that everything is responding. So it's not like we have a faulty ECM or that mass airflow. Maybe it could be sending wrong signals. But to me, it seems like it's responding correctly. Um, all the EGR solenoids are shown correct. That's not to say maybe we don't have a stuck panel. You never know. Um, same thing with the idle air. That seems to be reading correctly. That was another thing I was leaning to. Maybe it was stuck open. However, that seems to be okay. Um, I guess I'm going to pull this intake duct off just to double check and make sure everything's good. Maybe I'll clean it out. Because these are known for gunking up. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, I got the two clamps loose. Hmm. Okay, the first thing I see right away that's pretty obvious to me is that somebody's been here before. There's supposed to be a, a screen to keep uh, debris off of that sensor and help the atomization of the air so someone's removed that screen so someone's definitely been here and it looks like it's been clean all right let's remove that mass airflow sensor okay once you got it unplugged and the three screws removed just pull it straight up and out appears to be clean I just want to spray any contaminants out of the throttle body. I'm going to let it evaporate. Okay, guys, I think I may have just found a problem. After cleaning this all up when I was putting everything back together, I looked over and I noticed something. If you come over here to the EGR tube that runs up to the intake manifold, it's out of the intake. It actually came loose and it's popped out. And you can see the o-ring in there cock sideways and just a massive gaping hole creating a massive air leak vacuum leak which is all unmetered it's after the mass airflow it's after the throttle body so that's almost like a wide open throttle plate when you think about it and it's not metered okay, i'll try to explain this in some more layman terms for those of you who don't understand the basic concept of this setup you got your mass airflow sensor which pretty much meters the airflow going into the engine 
Okay, along with that, you got your TPS sensor, which is located right down there, and that's hooked onto your throttle plate. So when you give it gas from inside, it pulls this lever, which opens a, a throttle butterfly valve, and it turns that TPS. So that TPS tells you exactly where your throttle angle is at inside that throttle body. Okay, when, so when you give it gas, that sends a signal to the computer, almost like your accelerator pump, dumping more fuel in, that's sending a signal to the computer saying, hey, I need to keep the injectors open a little longer, dump some more fuel to meet the airflow and the throttle angle. So you can think of that TPS as somewhat of an accelerator pump on a carburetor. When the accelerator pump fails, you give it gas and it just falls flat on its face and stalls out and pops through the carburetor because you have way too much air and not enough fuel. So what was happening here is your throttle plate's closed or on idle, so your TPS is saying, hey, I'm good. Your airflow coming through this airflow sensor saying I'm fine. So it's just idling. So it's pulsing the injectors at idle. So if you think about it, with this wide open air leak, you're getting way too much air and not enough fuel because it's unmetered. Your TPS is saying, hey, my throttle plate is closed on idle. Your airflow, your mass airflow is saying, I'm just getting enough air for idle. I'm doing well. But you have this unmetered air leak just sucking in wide open air, almost like a wide open throttle plate. And everything's just pulsing at idle. So you're getting way too much air and not enough fuel. That's why it's starting up, revving up, and then shutting down. Okay, so let's try to fix this EGR tube. I'm going to take it right out so I can see what's going on. Make sure everything's okay in there. It's just a 10 millimeter stud pretty much. Hope everybody's having a good holiday season. It's actually Christmas Eve. I'm here at the shop because I feel bad because this guy's out of a vehicle. So let's pop this thing out. See what's going on? Ooh, surprised it didn't suck that O-ring in. What these are supposed to do, if someone's had this thing apart, because if I remember these right, I used to work on a lot of these when we used to rebuild engines. And that clip's supposed to be in front of this O-ring, I believe. So when it pushes in, it pushes against this. So I might have to go pick up another, another tube from the yard, because I think there's something missing. That O-ring shouldn't fall off that easy. And then another thing here is this clip's broke. Because how these work, I don't know if you can see it in there, it's got to push in and actually turn. So you push it in, turn it to lock it, and it can't come out. But this bottom clip's broke. And I don't believe this O-ring's supposed to, if I remember correctly, there's supposed to be something here. Because there really isn't a flat surface for that O-ring to push against. So there's supposed to be a snap ring or something that just rests on there and pushes against the plastic ears and push against this O-ring. I'll have to go see if I can find another tube because with that being broke, that'll also answer the question if something's missing here. Which it just doesn't look right to me. Alright, I'll be back. Okay guys, I just got back from the yard. They didn't have the exact tube. They had a newer style set up. However, I got it just so I could uh, see if I could take it apart. This is the old one. This is the one we took off. And you see what I mean? How this O-ring just flops off. There's nothing really keeping it. And there's just ears that go around the perimeter on that intake. So this really has nothing to push against. So the new one confirmed my suspicions. How there's supposed to be a ring. And see how I can't push that O-ring out? There's a, there's a snap ring that kind of holds that, retains that in place. And then when it pushes, the snap ring actually pushes against the ears and compresses the, the O-ring. So when you tighten it up, it expands a little bit and seals so you don't have a vacuum leak. This tube's a little bit longer, as you can see. I'm going to see if I can take apart this plastic piece and take the one off of the. This one's not broke. Both ears are in good shape from the one at the yard. But this one has a broken ear. 
You see that ear is broke. So I'm going to see if I can take that plastic piece apart. It looks like I can pop that apart and take this good one and put it on there. So let's see what we can do. All right, so I hope that's making sense to you how I explained that, how the unmetered air from this massive air leak is going to affect the whole fuel injection system because it just doesn't, just not expecting that massive leak. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to start with the one from the yard. That way I don't, at least I could try to make this one work. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, this just simply pushes off. It's not like it's in a groove or nothing, but it's a spring clip. Okay. Got that removed. So. Looks like these are just plastic clips. back half came off. I'm hoping I can slide this whole piece off the front. It's got one broken ear, but that should be fine. Okay, cool. That's a good one. Let's do this one. Okay, so yeah, this thing's definitely been apart because you guys seen it. That ring is there, but it's behind the O-ring. It doesn't just end up like that. Somebody's been here. So, the ring is there. But I need to get that spare one anyway for this piece. Hopefully it fits on okay. Some of you guys may wonder why I go through all this hassle repairing stuff, but where else am I going to find a tube like this on Christmas Eve? <laughs> yeah. I'm just thankful the yard was open. Everything looks the same. So, let's see what happens. Make sure all these are clipped in. Okay, so that's going to push into the slots. I need to turn it. It'll keep it from coming out. Looks like they're all seated good. I have a couple ones that are starting to crack. Like that one there. I might take some super glue and just put a little bit in there. I got some real good super glue I'll show you. That's the only crack one I see, but everything else appears to be appears to be good, so. Now you know, the O-ring first, and then the ring. Okay, so now that makes a lot more sense to me. For that one ear that has the crack in it, I'm going to use some cube mod. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this stuff, but it's works really well as you can see they demonstrate it gluing a, a neck back onto a radiator however I don't know if I'd do that but all kinds of stuff man they they put a rear view mirrors back on they're saying this stuff they guarantee it it's pretty expensive it's not cheap and I've used it on a few things I never went to the extent of doing that but what's cool about this is that you can even according to this you could do aluminum because it comes with all kinds of powders for your uh, aluminum and steel and what have you. I'm not promoting this product at all, but to tell you the truth, it works pretty well. And it comes with the other fill-ins and take a clean something. Try to get all the oils out of it. No, it's not gonna be perfect. However, for the one that's cracked, I'm gonna use the black Cube bonnets for bumpers, grills, fairings, radiators. I'm going to do a little glue on this one first. That way it goes down inside. Do 
this one a little different. I should read the instructions, but... That one I'll have to file now. Let that dry. Stuff dries like steel. You want to believe it. Okay. Okay, for this one near the tab, I'm going to take and file it down a little bit. Amazing stuff, guys. I gotta admit. Okay, so let's see if this lines. There we go. Now she's all locked in place. That should not go anywhere, guys. Okay, moment of truth, guys. Let's fire it up and see what it does. vacuum leaks. This isn't the best method to use, but uh, anything flammable, brake cleaner, car cleaner. Okay, we're good. If there was a vacuum leak there, this would have sucked in, went into the combustion chamber, and would have heard a change in the RPM of the engine. I could hook my smoke machine and everything up. However, this is a quicker method. I'll give you another demonstration on a smoke machine later on. However, for a quick down and dirty, this will get the job done. So we're good. We got a little bit of automator squeal because the battery's low. I ran to the yard and picked up a new screen. It's like a honeycomb similar to what's in your catalyst converter. Because that should be in there. Okay, you want to take caution not to, not to break it. Let's work it in. Nice and even. They're not really supposed to remove them. You can clean them simply by spraying them with cleaner in place. But if you have to remove them, if you try picking out, you're going to break it. So what you could do is simply tap around this perimeter, and it'll actually start walking out. It's kind of odd how it works. It's almost like when you get a bolt stuck in a socket sometimes. If you whack the socket, the bolt will pop out. Same thing with that screen. That's how I got this one out without damaging it at the yard. You just simply get something a little more solider than this handle. You don't want to hit it hard. You just lightly tap around the perimeter, and it will vibrate it out. It'll, it'll slowly come out. Now let's install the retainer ring. I want to make sure it's seated in its groove all the way around the perimeter. Okay. 
So there's a little unmetered air one-on-one. -on -one. I hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if anything, I hope you learned something. Until next time, guys. Stay tuned.